well, like with Nyla, like 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 what uh, Information Man was saying earlier, is only an issue because of two things: what I say and on my channel, and what people view my position as. If I didn't have any of that, it would never be an issue. But like, I didn't realize that all, um, all of the the swirlers, because I know people who think outside, who I definitely would not say that they are anti-black. They, some people just will date in race or whatever. Um, but I would not call them anti-black. But what I see, like, I will say that the Crystal Carols and Carols and people, I think they are anti-black. And like I did, I had no idea that that black woman spear lady said that said death to all black men. Like those those are the mentalities for me that are problematic. Like black men and black women who because they date out, they want the rest, they want the the opposite sex of their race to be in it. That is my biggest problem. Yeah, they make all kind of videos. Like I think one time she made a video, I'll never forget it. But she was telling black women to act, how to act to get a white man. And I'm like, okay, I don't even see brothers doing making videos like that. Like how to act to get a white woman. Brothers can just be themselves and they get whatever woman they want. Yeah. You know? And in that, within that video, she told one of the things that she told them was that you can't be pro black and you can't be on this black social activism. You can't be running to get involved and get, you know, invested when shit happens with black people. Like, I saw that video, too, when she was, like, 10 days or something like that. And to me, that, like, that's fucked up. Yeah, because she, she's the first person I've ever heard to say blackity black. I never heard nobody say that before. Oh, before that, say that. Um, that comes from CB Cell Black 4, remember? Oh, okay, okay. Well, I just, I don't know. She was just saying that in that video. And the thing is, if I was making that kind of content, then I would understand people going in on me like, hold on, Phil, your platform too big to be promoting that. Okay, I would get that that aspect, um, and I don't promote that. I don't. And see, Pretty Boy Randy was saying that that Phil, Bill Cosby put all that money into the black community, and I think that's part of what Taz's point was. Sure, Bill Cosby put money in the community, but he did screw white women. So if you guys are not mad at Bill Cosby for screwing a bunch of white women because he paid his way in, y'all need to shut up. And you have to you have to do the right comparison. Are you saying that the Koch brothers and Donald Sterling are for black people? Like you don't get both sides of the argument. Well, they ain't gonna find they ain't gonna find a bunch of white women with me because I don't I don't be uh uh-uh, uh I only I don't fool with them. I'm not. That's not a history for me. I always knew they was a no no. That was not allowed. Yeah. I just, I, I just don't know, and I hate when people bring the money into it where they say, "Well, well, people." And the thing is, like, if like I, I hate to say, I hate to see people basically saying money makes you pro black because that that's that means anybody can be it. And especially these rich celebrities worth millions and millions of dollars, all they have to do is come in and get a tax write off and throw some money at some, throw some money. But like nobody is going to call him out for swirling. Nobody is. But like let let a black uh, the black women celebrities that they hear about that have slept with white men, they gonna drag them up and down the street. But they can't. They are still caping for Bill Cosby, but he slept with a bunch of white women. So I don't think well, not. I think the difference it is a difference sometimes. I think it is the difference that some people make is because women naturally submit, then 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 you know, a lot of men would feel well, you know, you submitting yourself to, to a white man. So if you are with a white man, then you gotta make that white man feel comfortable. And most white men have an issue with black men. So that's why you may you will see the those women that you're talking about, the Chris and Karis and crowd be so anti-black males because they cannot respect the black man in the, in the right way being with them because they're going to feel some sort of way. And I've heard many black women that either dated them or was in relationships with them kind of saying that they do had an issue um, with them having respect for black men because they view us as the enemy. Mm-hmm. But I do still think um, with the race the, the interracial, I think that even even with men, 
date when, when black men date, date white women, I still believe that they're in a, a, a submissive type of situation because because of that woman's status. Now, not all situations, like if you're dating, you know, methany, um, poor white trash or whatever, I wouldn't say that, but I do believe that those women still understand their level of white privilege, especially if you are one of those trash black men that will say to these white women that black women ain't shit or whatever. You do give them this air, this air of superiority. And if you're telling a white woman that she's a better choice and she's better than black women. You are telling her she's above your mother. She's above, you know, everybody that you came from. And you know, same likewise with, with with black women. Like I don't, I don't see how a black woman can lay down with a white man. I just don't. I, I don't see it. I don't understand it at all. That's some bizarre shit to me. But either way it goes, it just to me, you are literally putting them above your people when you. You know, do that promoting of it. Well, some do. Some dudes are, are on that. They go to a woman of a different race and say she's better and she ain't like the black woman, X, Y, Z. And so, yeah, you're right. And, and they be on some, some white supremacist, you know, or some sort of superiority attitude um, because of the men, the black men, that's gassing their head up. It's just that simple because, you know, some women of different groups are jealous of, of black women. That's, that's the total truth. And you can see they kind of mimic because, you know, they follow, you know, like now the black fishing and, um, you know, they go in plastic surgery to mimic, you know, the bodies of black women. Um, you know, we, we see that, but as for me, I just wouldn't even feel comfortable being with a woman that has a hatred, you know, at all. If she, you know, it's definitely, you know, you're dating someone that's not black. Well, why would you feel comfortable with her trash and black women when, if a child you have with her going to be considered black in this country, right? You got your mother, you know, you got your, at least my family, grandmothers, sisters, aunties, you know, all them, and this women that I love and, and, and respect and, and, uh, would do anything for, I mean, I couldn't even deal with it. Matter of fact, my family wouldn't even allow that happen. You know, you're not going to disrespect my family like that because I wouldn't allow it. And then, uh, they would check you, you know, at the same time, you know, um, so the family, at least my family, they have to approve. Or who you with too? Um, yeah. the bottom line. That's crazy though. Like when you think about, it, like I was uh, telling y'all about the white women in the groups who say stuff like they make better black children than black women, and how black, you know, they were raising black kings and queens and all this bullshit. These are white women saying that. Um, they do that, I believe, because I do. Like I said, I do think that there is a mental, there's a swirl of mentality, and I, and then there's the people that might date out. Um, and that swirl of mentality has to promote that opposite race above that, I believe. But what you won't see, even if the Crystal Carisons of the world are telling those white men that they're so much better than black men, you will never see white men going into spaces with black men telling them that they're better. Not seriously, you might still make trolling or whatever. But like seriously, like take, you know, in black men's spaces, like saying, hey, um, I make better black children than you. I'm raising kings and black kings and queens. But these white women, they have this this serious like superiority and arrogance um, because I, they, I guess they get it on both sides because they did get to be the standard of beauty anyway. And then when you got some coon ass Negro that will put them on a pedestal. They do get to come into our spaces and say shit like that. Y'all don't get them bitches knocked out. Not you per se, but I'm talking about the people who do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one, the ones who's doing it. Well, um, hold on. I don't know why this happened. Anyway, my little girl, she she come climb up on me. Um, in anyway, uh, you know, well, like you say, you got some dudes. They like say just gassing their head up, and and they gassing their head up because they got their feelings hurt. Possibly, you know, some guys got mother issues, and and we don't know. Want to talk about that? But some guys have mother issues, and um, so it makes their their dating very difficult. So anything that maybe a black you know a woman would say to them may sound like their mother and be a very triggering point with them. Some of them, um, and then you know because like you say, let's say whoever else they dating doesn't remind them or sound like their mother. I mean that's that's some of the issues too. Oh, some of some of the guys, especially growing up out of single parent households. Um, because, because some of the moms, you know, the, 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 dad was like a piece of crap and, 
and sometimes they get frustrated and the, you know the son sounds just like the dad act like the dad oh boy I'm f- sorry about that my phone's ringing um anyway so that 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 happens but i don't think whoever you're dating if you were with a woman that is cool with you disrespecting the women in your race that's stupid and and, and that woman not even for the right thing those same women are called you know your your daughter you have with her the n-word and we've seen that in many stories before um you know they don't want to take care of them they abuse them because if they have an issue with black women like the kardashians what is it that chloe you know she really didn't want a a, a daughter she wanted a boy yeah I, I, I don't believe that like just looking at some of the white women that have black daughters once they start to exhibit uh those girls when they start to exhibit blackness um it seems like i, I believe that they get disenchanted with them like if the, if if their girls get kinkier hair or darker skin and they're less racially ambiguous and they look more black than anything they don't like that they they're usually they you know they they tend to mistreat those girls yeah they do and so you have to you know you know like i say the brothers you know they have to consider that because you know some brothers you know in my situation they were angry at me because i was advocating for them not to fool with black women i mean i'm sorry white women i've said it many times well you said don't fool white women yes i don't have a white woman i'm telling you leave them alone because the problems that's caused and and so many times i've said yes get you a black woman i've said it so many times Uh, i said that my i wouldn't go just divorce my wife i said but if it's if i was at this level and single I said, I, and I did, you know, marry my wife, then yeah, I would expect the smoke because not the way I'm talking and the understanding I have now. Now, if I had the understanding that I have now versus back, you know, in that time period, it wouldn't be a conversation. But, you know, you can't, your life happens the way it happens. Um, you know, but most black people are with black people anyway. So that's just like, you know, when we look at the grand scheme of things of the world, like I said, that's a very small issue if you look at it. You know, like you, you look in African nations. I mean, some of them nations got four to six kids per, you know, couple or whatever. I said, you know, we need to get back on that having kids. But, um, um, it, you know, I, like I said, I just think it's more to do in society. Um, like I said, everyone's not, no one's going to be perfect. They're going to find some flaw with you. Like I said, if it's not your spouse, it'll be the way you talk, the way you look, your personality may not be to what people like. It's going to be something. You know what I'm saying? Even if you was a single man, never you got with a woman at all, you know, whatever, they still gonna find the issue with you. Psychopath is what you shaking your head about. No, then, then it's, 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 I think it's kind of weird. You got a you got a grown man in here talking about. I have footage of him saying, "Yes, I did an interview with a, with a woman named Karen Potter." All you have to do is marry white women and have children. I mean, people are human beings at the end of the day. I mean, we all want the same things. And, you know, focusing on color and all this other stuff, I mean, to me, like, racism is a form of mental illness, in my opinion. If this lady makes you happy and she happened to be white, go ahead. Go with her. It, it goes way back in the past, okay, when slavery was going on. It was known that, hey, you know, black men, they slaves. You don't touch them. White women, they're, you know, the master's woman. OK, right, right, but we right. all know that it happened and it did happen. They had to sneak around to do sure. it. Okay, And a lot of people lost their lives behind it. So right. that relationship in America is the most taboo relationship, the black male, white woman relationship. Right. And the ones who have the biggest problem with it, white men and black women have a problem with that. You've been in traditional like black men, black women relationships now with a white woman. What are the differences going to be? Well, definitely you have two different cultures. Of right. Course. You have two different upbringings. You have two different, you know, like the way society life. looks at you is completely, you know, yeah, obviously you're not looked at. You is completely different. Like as a black man, you may be looked at as a sellout, you know, by why you know, sellout? Why would he be selling out? Because the stigma is this: a black man only get with a white woman as a trophy piece, or when he's successful, when he's broke and don't have nothing, a white woman won't give him no type of attention. Really? Which we know that's not true. No, I know, I know from personal experience it's not true. I know white men actually date more interracially than anybody. Okay, but white women don't go up to them and say, "What are you doing?" Right. That's that's what I'm saying. I don't think that it's it it, it doesn't. No, they, seem, don't, they don't do yeah, that. It's it, not the it, same thing. 
No, it's not. And just like when it comes to black men, if you see a black woman dating a man of a different race, you know, we don't go up to them like, you know what I'm saying? We don't sell them to sell out or we ain't looking at the guy all funny. But for the most part, black men don't really care about all that. They just trying to do them, whatever that may be. But if a black man is dating a woman of a different race and he's seen he has the maybe the aura of success then he's looked at funny and cost him even from his own family he could be called sell out and all his other because stuff. they're the black man that's with this white woman and he's moving up the social ladder or something like that because he's yeah, without that's yeah. that's what it is i mean because why why i'm not gonna worry about what another man or woman got i'm worried about the female i'm with because you're happy with who you have, and that's the bottom line. And people uh -huh. are judging all the time. People are judging white men with black women, whatever it is. You know, it's just like, why Why does everybody have to judge everybody? We have to recognize it as this. All of that is stemmed out of racism. I mean, is, we have to call it what it is. I mean, people are human beings at the end of the day. I mean, we all want the same things. And, you know, focusing on color and all this other stuff, I mean, to me, like, racism is a form of mental illness, in my opinion. If this lady makes you happy and she happened to be white, go ahead. Go with her. And that's how it should be. Everybody should be cool with each other. And we shouldn't be having all this sellout and all this other stuff. Now, I notice white men have very strict standards when it comes to their women. What I mean by that, they want them to work out. Yep. Want them to keep themselves up, mm -hmm. even to the point that white women get plastic surgery. Oh yeah, to keep themselves up. Right now, I noticed that when white women get around thirty-five and start to go as older, a lot of times white men, if they aren't married already, it's hard for them. They will be rejected a lot of times by white men, and a lot of times I know these older white women go with black men, and black women would take them wherever how they are. You know, we would accept you know women. That even have weight or have curves. Well, that's, that's I think that's more of that. You know, I and I and I think I love that about black men. Black men don't seem to have these crazy standards of women have to be this skinny and you know. Uh, I think that the, and that makes women insecure. Why is that? Who the hell do you, these white men think they are anyway? So you yes. know what, white women, <laughs> you get to a certain age. Go after a black guy. <laughs> that's, the problem. that's the answer to your problem. <laughs> that's the answer. You know what? Yeah. If, Forget about these white men. They, you know what? They don't appreciate you the way you are. Go after a black man. They're a lot more loving. That's that's the answer to the problems. Yeah, we figured out. We figured out the. We figured out the answer to all of life in this little episode. Years ago, and that's the way I thought. Years ago, that's not what I think now. Like like this self righteous attitude Americans have. Like oh, you talked about this five years ago, and I'm got the footage. Okay, you got it. I did it, and. Do I promote that today? Did I promote that yesterday? Did I promote that a year ago, two years ago, three years ago? No, I did not. So, like, just be the female you need to be with. You know, I just think it's weird when a dude is always so invested in what another dude is doing. I can understand women saying something, but a man, come on. It's weird. Yeah, I'm cold in information, man. What's good with you? But uh, I'm yeah, I'm a little cold right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, I came but up I here to what address, saying, bro. Yeah, I, I did kind of want to address what was said about me and um, while I was in the chat. Um, Phil over here is saying that um, I'm worried about what who he's sleeping with and everything else, and making a claim that um, would you say I I made, I made um, I gave my opinion. I didn't even give my opinion about your situation in the chat. I called you out on a lie that you said, bold face lie that you said. And it ain't the first time I heard you say that lie. You getting up on these panels running around saying you never promoted for black men to get with white women is a lie. And I said that in um in the chat. I said I got the footage to back it up. You have promoted black men getting with white women. So stop telling people that. That's a lie. That's not a that's not me giving my opinion. That's me stating a fact. You're lying. 
And didn't I say, and I think I said it before, yes, I did an interview with a woman by the name of Karen Potter, and I said what I said at that time period. And no one even hardly watched my channel back then. We talking about now and people watching and everything. I don't promote that. I ain't promoted that two years ago. I didn't promote it three years ago. I mean, I said what I said. It is what it is. Move on. Well, stop saying that you didn't say it. I can say what I want to well, say. Well, then yeah. you're lying then. You can say it, but that means you're lying. That's my point. If you want to get up on here and lie to the people that you've been doing, then keep doing it. But if you want to stay up here and, and, and stop lying to the people and you want to get your credibility back, if that's even possible, you might want to stop doing credibility that. Credibility with whom, sir? You might want to stop lying. Uh, credibility with whom, sir? Credibility okay. with who? With people like myself. With oh, people I, like I, myself. I, people I, I, that, I people that, people that talk, people that, because, people that don't get down very, with the anti, now, I know people that don't get down with people very who, very emotional, people right. that don't get down. I'm telling you, ask the question, I'm answering you. You keep talking over me. You see, this, this now, like I said, no, you, this, you ask me people about. like whom I'm trying to tell okay, you. And you're talking I'm not get your credibility, so it's nothing you could tell me. So what's the point? What do you mean? What's the point? Stop lying. Okay. How about okay. that? I, I, like Let's I said, just say my whole original point. Stop telling people you never promoted I black men get with white women. What I say in twenty. Stop telling people that because you're lying. To people. You're lying did, to people. Did, I'm sick of you. Did I admit? You still talking? Did I admit, sir? I'm sick of. Did I admit? Did I okay, admit? So, I so admit it's accent answered that he said at a point in time that is something he said, and you came on and you said you had the proof. My question would be if we're going to just open this door, is what was your pivotal turning point? Um, Phil, this is uh, DJ Renee from Baton Rouge. Okay. What, was your, what was your pivotal turning point um, that transitions you from that? frame of thought at that time to where you've been progressing over the last couple of years what was that aha moment for you uh when i went to the million man march in 2015 and what did you hear there what did you see what did you feel that turned that thinking process for you i started studying before i went um a lot of things out of the nation of islam or i started reading the message of the black man um, I looked into Elijah Muhammad. I studied more into Louis Farrakhan, Khalid Muhammad. Um, I went to the, you know, Million Man March, and I also went just to cover it. It would not really get more into it, um, but, you know, the brothers, you know, was real, you know, solid. I liked the work they did in the community, and, and I say, you know what? I need to, you know, use my platform to do better than what I'm doing. I don't think I'm doing right by, by what I'm presenting, and so I said, when I get back to Houston, the first thing I'm going to do is look for those same brothers and try to, you know, be, you know, a little bit better in what I'm doing. And that's what made me turn around at that time period. That's commendable. Okay. Now, for your experience uh, growing up, mm -hmm. your, did your environment um, in your childhood influence your opinions prior to what you were able to experience at the second Million Man March? Were there things that you missed or were there things that Maybe you could have learned in your earlier form. Did you was there something in your formative years that um, made you have a? I don't want to put words in your mouth and then correct me. Uh, that made you might have had a, a distaste or looked unfavorably on some some things. Is that is? Are you willing to expound on that just a bit? Um, like I grew up definitely like in the black community. Uh, Seen definitely the destruction of the crack epidemic, you know. Uh, family members went to jail. I've seen a lot of people, you know, kill. Um, there's a lot of things with sour and in, in, oh, daddy, on, daddy on the thing. Be quiet. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, I'm sorry, my little girl. Um, um, some water. yeah, she, I know she wants some water. Here, I got a little bit right here. Mm -hmm. uh, here, drink the daddy water right here. Uh, anyway, so so when they, when they come, well, daddy not going down there. He busy here. You, you not you see how it is? Four year olds. Uh, uh, Y'all see that you, the one year old be over here dominating me. <laughs> yeah, but but, but, in, but anyway, as as you know, like I said, I, I've had like I said my experiences, and I just always felt that you know I grew up with in the ba Baptist church and everything. And I, you know, I, I was pushing more strong Christianity definitely back then. I felt what, hey, you know, you can't be hating people, people are people. And that's just kind of how I felt at, at that time period. 
you know, some of the things like I'm gonna say back in that time period, I hear and I even saying today, I was like, oh my, it would be totally night and day. I wouldn't even agree with that back then uh, to now. But uh, I just kind of seen, you know, the light or whatever, and and I know I had to make some changes for the better. Um, I'm glad I have made those changes for the better. So, you know, when people try to go back, oh, in the past, you said this, yes. And many people have their Damascus moment, moment too, you know, and they, they, they turn some things around. So, you know, and at the end of the day, I know, you know, what, I, what I'm doing is my right path. And, and, and that's it. I mean, sure, I've had some experiences that piss me off in my life. And yes, it comes out in videos at times. But, you know, it, I think that's all of us on YouTube. We express ourselves through video. And, and, and sometimes it can be therapy for you. You know what I'm saying? You know, it just, I, I don't know. Sometimes I don't want to go down that route sometime and talk about that because, you know, people run with that or a totally different route than what you're saying. So that's why I try to keep some of that things off of here. You know. No, and that's okay. But I just ask to turn around. To those who think I'm reading a script, I'm actually a 20 year uh, radio uh, veteran and been around the, 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 the radio environment, entertainment my entire life. So I am able to switch it up very quickly which is why i was able to quickly turn around and ask feel those questions i've been doing this a long time um Sade, my girl i didn't um there is no exception here i would give him the same respect i'm giving him to to answer more accurately if it was cynthia g who people pick on if it was tommy sotomayor and i'm just mentioning the names that i feel the listening audience is uh affiliated with uh, their politics rhetoric and some of that stuff is characterizations for you know character playing for money and but since phil does take this seriously i'm giving him the respect of of answering it uh asking and answering in a proper manner um uh, you know that that's it i'm sorry miss nala uh, you've been you, you've got 20 years i know this i've been going to jail for a while in 20 years experience, you still ain't gonna have to turn that goddamn mic down. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm not on my regular stuff. I cannot calibrate this mic. I'm not figured it out. I would have to do it, um, a test thing with, you know, without an audience to y'all to even figure out where it's at. That's funny. All right. But no, I, I, I wasn't, you know, and I wasn't digging, uh, Phil. I don't want you to think that I was digging at you by, uh, about your situation because that's, that's not where I was coming from with that. I was talking more so about um, the talking points that people try and use when, you know, you're in a debate with them and they, you know, use certain language. You know what I mean? The trigger language is, is what I think everybody kind of calls it, you know, in today's time, especially if you're in a, in a heated debate with anyone and they don't really uh, value what you have to say or they don't really want what you have to say to be heard, especially if you're debating the point that they've made. That's, that's more along the lines of where I was coming from with it. What, what I've noticed, though, when you are in like a heated debate with someone, when they, can't, when they don't have an argument or they know that argument is failing, well, since I've been here on YouTube, I noticed they usually just go to the personal attacks. And they, they stop attacking the points. Right. They're trying to go after the points. So I don't even think that they're trying to use shame and intellectually bankrupt. Words. They're just right. intellectually bankrupt and they can't they can't argue the point. See again, that's why I deal with this side of YouTube and not the other side of YouTube. Now because, can I say something though, twin? But uh, yeah. I think also we can't let that be the excuse for like um like with any public people, I keep hearing people down in the chat saying uh, we're giving Phil too much uh, credit for being a celebrity, quote unquote. Uh, I use that word loosely and unloosely because let's be real. This is this is where we at in the, in the world today. YouTube, these these platforms is where we at. Your kids ain't sitting on TV watching. You know, what I'm saying they're just not doing that no more. So these are your Phil's and your Nyla's. These, this is who, this is where it's at. Like, this is where people is getting off work. Like, let's, let's be for real. We all be on here. We grown, we all grown as hell and look what we doing. Yep. So what do you think these teenagers are doing? So I'm saying that to say, even with Phil, you know, with all of these public, when you get into these sectors, you really just got to be ready for whatever comes with, when you, especially when you start taking a stance one way or the other. I don't give a damn if it's for black issues. If you was out here talking about fucking clean water, you're going to have opposition. And they're going to dig into your life and dig into shit that 
they can use against you or whatever. So I just think anybody that's doing this, so-called doing this work and out here trying to, you know, when you're a public, especially when you make yourself public, you just got to be ready for what come with it. And you can't be shy for about explaining yourself to the, especially to black people. You can't, you, you don't get to say all the time, well, this, that's my personal, I'm, a lot of black people, your politics is who you sleeping with. Your politics is who you marry. Your politics is who you go home to sometimes. And we just have to be realistic about that. And we love Phil, but we have to be realistic about why black people are responding the way they are with the whole field thing or those type of situations. And I don't think we get to say all the time, well, let's, of course, as a man, I don't give a damn who you're sleeping with or who you go home to if you're doing this work per se. But people are only going to go so far with you when your politics don't align in your personal life. That's just the reality. We can't bullshit it with that. With, we have to be AB, honest about that. Phil was ABL and he found out that ABL had a non-black wife and would care because ABL doesn't hold to those standards. But when you right. have somebody who's supposed to be pro-black and fighting for the people but sleeping white, that's a problem. That's a problem. And I don't even understand how this is a hard concept for people to grasp. You know, if Phil was still doing his hyena videos back in the day at his kitchen table, uh, reviewing world star hip hop videos like he used to do. Wouldn't nobody give a fuck because nobody nobody would hold him to those standards. Yeah. But being that he's over here going to Million Man marches, and, um, chilling with the Moors and going to Africa and everything else, but yet sleeping non-black. That's a problem. They're going to question sorry. it. Yeah. Well, and I'm going back to Africa this year, too. And they only going to go so far, you know what I mean? I think it wasn't. It was you know what happens when I get to Africa? They tell me, welcome home. I but you know what, though? But yeah. you know do what, they say though? that to your wife? They don't say that to your wife, though, do they? Oh, 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 hold on, bro. Wait, okay, wait, so I, what's your I point? ain't trying to make it personal. But let's, yeah, let's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing. Do you have a wife, sir? Not anymore. I, okay, I'm so not, you don't have a wife. Okay. I have I, I'm one. Not, yeah. I'm not trying to make it personal, but we just got finished talking about the sister that uh kamala uh female who's married non-white we just got finished talking about her now everybody had their own piece to say about you know whether or not to support her based on the fact that she was married non-black right so i think that what the brother just said kind of goes a long way it resonates when you especially with black people you know what i mean um that's that's the same thing after everybody found out that you know, well, it came to knowledge in, uh, for the majority of black people when they found out that President Obama was a mixed heritage. I think that a lot of black people backed off of him once they found that out. Mm, a whole lot. I'm sure it diluted the, the excitement. Right. So can I ask a question? Uh -huh. Yes. Um, are we saying that, okay, let's just say um, that dating out or marrying out is... Is is it, 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 it is obviously offensive, right? It's an offense for sure. But are we saying that that's the one offense that renders a person unredeemed? Does that mean because you know how like we have a a cancel culture now? So like if somebody does something that we don't like or something, because I really this is this is why and y'all know I do not advocate swirling. But like in situations like this, and just in real life, we know that we're going to encounter this. You can't do nothing about it, right? But so, do is the are, are you guys saying the solution is for him to get rid of his wife? No, I'm no. not saying that at all. Not at all. No, not at I'm all. Not no, I'm not saying that. I'm finished. So, is the solution okay? Y'all answer that part. But are is what black YouTube saying, or the majority of black YouTube? Are we saying that? He's like unredeemable because of this. Like he cannot be a benefit. And can I can I answer first, sis? Sure. I want a uh, second. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, um, oh, um, it, it's a hard road uh, when you make a, a dramatic change in philosophy, almost like a, maybe a Christian going to a Muslim or. Uh, Muslim becoming a, a, a Christian. Um, I think it's just something they have to be willing to do with and maybe we have to look at the greater good. I think quieting somebody as, you know, the person we're speaking on now is more harm than, than good. That would have been like, I don't know, quieting Harry Belafonte or something back in the day, you know? Yeah, I just, 
I don't think it's a question of unredeemability because I don't think anybody is in a place to question his blackness. He's a black man at the end of the day. I think what it does, though, like I said, with us, with us as a group, it only so, it's only so far that certain people are going to go with you, especially because of your politics or how, what they what they look at is your politics. Let me rephrase that because he's not a political. I'm not saying that he's going with white politics. I'm just saying because of the way you're going to be viewed, being that you're married that way. So I think like it's only so far you're going to you get what I'm saying. People are going to go with you. So, I mean, that's just I mean, the thing. I don't think it's a redeemability thing, but some people are going to be like, OK, you know, with this situation, uh, we like he like I think I forget what the brother said, but you don't get to come up on the panel with to some people. You don't get to come on the panel and have discussions about black family. You just don't get to do that. But how long does that go? Because it kind of reminds me of like I get shit for saying that we should be empathetic to our brothers and sisters that got to make that <laughs> You sound broke up, sister. I'm sorry. Okay, um, yeah, this, yeah. Um, so like if people have made some bad decisions, but uh -huh. they are doing what they're supposed to do, mm -hmm. do you, are we saying that we throw people away because they made they made a decision that you didn't like, or even if they just did something that's bad? Like what like I don't this is what well, I don't, yeah, I don't I don't think that's throwing him away though. I think that's just I, I, I'm, I'm saying, sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Yeah, what I'm saying so I've only been doing panels for what, like going on three months. So whoever's making all that noise, can you please go on? God, I gotta get my laptop because I can't keep getting up to this computer. Um, are we saying like because every I've been doing panels for what, like three months, I think. And so Phil, I think, has been coming for maybe the last two and a half months. And every time he comes, um, almost every time this becomes a topic at some point during the conversation. So I'm trying to figure out, is this always going to like, what, what are, what is our goal? Like, what can we do? Well, to, well, do y'all want to throw him away? Like, what are you saying that people are not being, are you, what are you saying? Well, nobody's going to take him serious as far as being black first. That's, let's just get that clear. As long as he has a non-black wife, nobody's going to take that serious. Yeah, nobody's saying he has to divorce his wife, but th the last thing people want to hear is him on here talking about black love. Like, are you going to let a literate person do your taxes? No, you're not. You, you're going you're to go find somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing, right? So why am I listening to somebody who's not exercising black love, speak on black love? I, that's very hard for me to take serious. So there's certain topics he has no business talking about, in my personal opinion. He should just stay far away from and that will probably help his situation, just me personally. Well, I, I think that um, I, I'm going to sway a little bit on a different side from that. Um, he's in that situation based upon him, you know, that's, that's what it is. Now, I would say this. The thing that I admire is that he, he has come back and said here tonight, and it was never a question for me because I really I ain't could give a shit less at the end of the day. But he has come back and said, that's how I thought about black people, what black men should do, marry out. Back then, this is my mindset. Now, everybody's entitled to change their mind. And, and I don't have an issue with it because he stood on what he said. I said it then, but this is how I believe now. And he has a right to do that. That's just my opinion. So for me, it's not an issue of him being, being you know, I look at, in a way, I kind of look at Hispanics as being uh, somewhat, you know, black. And, she, and I look at it like this. I'm going to sum it up. At least she's not white. That's how I see it. Well, the thing is that, like, that's why I, I kind of find some of the, um, some of the out, like, I knew, like, when it first came out, okay, so everybody's going to be outraged or whatever, which I had heard that his wife may have been uh, Mexican, but I wasn't like I wasn't sure, and it didn't it didn't matter to me because it was like if that like you can't tell somebody to get divorced, like you know what I'm saying? Like when looking at his content, I didn't see him making content that was anti-black. I never saw him um, 
Some black men, you need to marry outside. I've never seen that type of propaganda coming from, I know Psychopathias, and he, he admitted that there was a video where he may have said that, but I think promoting it and being in an interview where you was asked a question and you answered it, I think it's two different things. But if, like, if looking at his content and um, in the entire body of work, I just, I, like, and just knowing, like, the real world or whatever, like, nobody is dealing this harshly with their real-life situations in their real families, in their real life. Like, we're not walking around being the squirrel Nazis. You know what I'm saying? Like, and mm-hmm. I, I believe, like, in real, to be honest, which I'm not going to get, you know, too personal, but I have taken some great steps that I know most people, as it relates to people in their family with this kind of relationship, I have been, like taken some steps that people never want to take. And like they don't pay to look at my family because of stuff like this. So like in real life, I've done what people are doing. If somebody ever is making all that noise. Damn. Um, and like I have taken some steps, you know, towards that or whatever, like that that I'm not proud of. You know, as it relates to these types of situations, but I know most people aren't willing to do that type of stuff. But are we doing this in real life? That's what, like, that's why I never seen people say that Mexicans were white. I never seen that before until, like, until recently. That's like for black folk, which I'm not denying that there are such things as, you know, white Mexicans or whatever, but. I've never seen black people put such emphasis on stuff like that before until like <laughs> yeah, it, it is a new phenomenon. I think there is a certain redeeming quality with someone willing to speak about it openly and honestly, uh, just as he did now. So I think uh everybody it's my ass for real. Not 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 initially, but because I understand he did have to do he did have to explain. So he did all the you know the community explanation or whatever they did be he was going to have to, and I'm sure he knew that as a man, he was going to have to deal with some bullshit or whatever. But three months later, like, I just don't know what the end game is. For psychopathians, he shouldn't be in black discussions anymore about black love and stuff like that. But, like, I'm, if, he, if he's promoting black love, is he also promoting it for his daughters? Like, I, I think that's the thing right there. He's He's being, like... For, for us to sit here and say, and I'm not saying no one say this, but for some in the community who feel he's not redeemable, I think it's ridiculous because if that's the case, we've all done crazy stuff in our background that would people could consider irredeemable. Mm-hmm. I, I think what we need to look at are people's actions. Phil is doing yeah. great work for the community. He's putting out great content about the community and he does promote black love. I think... Okay, he's already sat here and said, I did this. I used to say this. Like, I feel like this shouldn't even be an issue anymore. Well, okay, that's, a, that's a question out there. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of people out here that are theists slash God believers, right? Now, I'm an atheist. I don't believe God exists, right? So now, if I go up into a church dressed up as a pastor, but everybody knows I'm an atheist and I'm preaching the good word, I'm giving the word of God. I'm I'm preaching everything from the scriptures, word, word for word, verbatim, and I'm giving the proper message to all those Christians out there, all Hebrews or whoever. Are they going to listen to me? Because I'm an atheist. Why should they listen to me? I don't even believe the stuff that I'm saying. So they're not going to listen to me. They're going. They're going. They're going. Matter of fact, they're going to try to get me off. The, they're going to try to get me out the church. They're going to try to kick me out the church because they're going to find out that I don't even believe the stuff that I'm saying. I'm a heretic. Right. So they want. But psycho, don't you think that that's a little bit like a bit of false equivalence because you could actually be God in their culture. But to say, like, you're breaking the, up, Nyla. I said you could believe in God, but never go to church. Or vice mm-hmm. versa. But then, like, I wouldn't say that, and I'm not trying to speak for him, but I'm pretty sure that he's expecting his daughters to marry black men. I'm pretty sure that. Although maybe because his wife is not black, that does not mean that the belief in the the, the value in black <clears throat> is not there. I don't believe that we can say I don't I don't believe that um, you can say that you don't value black love because like I just I, I think 
feel am I going too far? You value black love, right? Um, yes, I want my son and my daughters uh, with black people. I mean, that's what my daughter is dating a you know black guy now. My other one, um, that's all she's ever dated was you know uh, black people. Um, that's all I advocate. I don't advocate nothing else. So, well, that, you, so does it make him hypocritical to, to to preach that if that's what he's trying to teach to his children? Does that mean that he doesn't believe in it? because he is married to a non-black woman. And, I, and then one more question, and I'll yield the floor to you guys. Um, most black folks, and I know we got this little lineage thing going or whatever, will say that they have all this native and they're this and this, this, that, or whatever. And then I was joking about the Israelite thing, but a lot of you all will give the Hebrew Israelites their passes when they say, you know, this is the tribe of Benjamin, this is the tribe of Issachar, this is the tribe of Vanessa, this is a tribe. So he would qualify as one, you know what I'm saying? Like where, like who is setting the boundaries for everybody and how do we do this and still all remain black first? Because let's say you were like a member of like ISUPK. If Phil was a member of ISUPK, he could be on Sinetta's network with his Mexican wife and be considered pro-black with that Mexican woman because of a belief system. So that's why I'm finding all of it to be contradictory. If you um, know what I'm saying. I hear exactly what you're saying. And I 100% agree with you. I feel like, again, I'm not going to look at someone's past because if people start looking at my past, they can be like, damn, twin man, that was jacked up. I want people to judge me for what the, for the things I'm doing now and, and what I'm promoting now and the messages I'm putting out now. Because... Five years ago, I, I wasn't the person I am now. I wasn't. We all do things that people aren't going to agree with. And then, like you, like you said, Nyla, there, there's just certain things in society. Like, if he, if he was doing certain things, it, it, no one would even bat an eye. So I feel like this. As long as Phil is doing the great works that he's doing, why are we sitting here continuing to talk about the man's wife? Like, that shouldn't even be a topic. I, I'm just sorry. That's just me. Well, the topic actually, let's, let's rewind here. The topic only came up because if you recall, no, this, I, I recall. Oh, we started with Taz, with, with Taz, he asked Taz a question. And Taz would see, we was trying not to go into that. If you really, if y'all really were trying to take, Taz was trying really not to go into that. But, you know, we was, we going to keep it real on that. Now, I will say this, as far as the, because I think her ultimate question was, it, when is it redeemable? Now, this, I just came into some information in this live that y'all, I didn't know. Now, about the, what Psycho said something about a comment that was made previously. Now, it's a difference between you just got a white girlfriend or a white wife, and then you specifically go out and make a comment against or telling black men to do something. Now, I didn't, I never heard of Phil saying that. So if that is true, then we have to sit back now and say, when you come to the redeemed question, because now I, as a black man, now I have to sit back now and say, okay, now we're in a different aspect than just this is a brother that's married to a non-black person, and this is a brother that actually went out and put rhetoric out here against black men and women uniting. That's a different, that's a, now you're playing in a different zone to me when you're talking about <sighs> redeemability. Now, when you get into as far as redeemability again, I get, I, we talk about your Amarosas and things of that nature. Are they redeemable? Um, how we use a redeemability as far as people that we know because we don't want to insult them, like because that's what it is starting to sound like to me. Because people bring these things up and they're keeping it 100 about how they feel about whatever it is the interracial situation. We can't, we have to be for real, like we can't play, we can't play one side because okay, Phil is our friend, mm -hmm. we can't do that. I, I, I hear what this sounds like, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm a Rosa. Hold on. I'm going I'm to I'm relieve after I can say this. I'm a Rosa to me. She's unredeemable, be not because she fucking worked for Trump. It's because the rhetoric and the things that she came out and said and said and did against black people. That's mm. where she's unredeemable. And her husband is black. What is that? Yeah, I mean, that's the word that I'm talking about, though, when it talks about redeemability. What did Omarosa do against black people? I can't hear you, Queen. What did, uh, what did Omarosa do against black people? She said a lot of rhetoric when she was working with the fact that she was misleading us, telling us certain things to trust Trump. To me, that's rhetoric to me. 
So is she redeemable, sis? I, 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 look, I, I, I tell you something. I don't have one motherfucking problem with Omarosa. And I'm going to tell you why. Every mother, not every motherfucker over here, because some of us have been self-employed, but everybody is working for some goddamn body that probably don't like them. Most of us have worked for some sort of organization that may have been rooted in white supremacy. So if y'all didn't hate Omarosa when she worked for Al Gore, I don't see how the fuck you can hate her because she worked for Donald Trump. The bitch mm -hmm. had Oh, it's not about her working for him. It's about the community. It's about that she purposely misled us. It's not about her working for him. She went she to work for him and she, she went for him and she, she kept it real. So I wouldn't say I would have an issue. But Amarosa stayed out herself that she's come out and told black people something that she knew was untrue. And this black people this black people. Motherfuckers daddy's lied to them more than Omarosa did. Like it's a difference, but it's a difference in me going on my white man's job. I work for this white man. I just come and punch in. I do my job, my little assignment. It's a difference to me doing that and then me coming in here and then I'm snaking every black person that I work with. I'm putting rhetoric out against other black people that I work with. That's a difference then. Good now, boy, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. My, my question, you was in the military, right? Mm -hmm. I currently serve in the military. There are people on the panel and there are people who in the community who feel like... Uh, the military is an arm of white supremacy. Are we irredeemable? I mean, I mean, me and Taz have had that discussion. That's that's what I'm asking y'all. Where do we where do we where do we where are we marking redeemability? Because that's what I'm saying. Some black people are gonna look at the field situation and say, okay, is he's dating, he's married to an uh, outside of the black. Fine. We still we gonna we gonna deal with him how we deal with him as far as I'll work with him on this or I won't work with him at all. Whatever their situation. Uh -huh. Then you gotta have some black people that are gonna look and say, "Well, he actually went out and said, brothers, marry out, don't marry black.' I don't know if he said that or not. I'm only going off of what Psycho said." So again, I'll tell you what I said. Hold on. Saying, yeah. you know, me. This is what I'm saying. As I'm saying back hearing that, then that changes the narrative to some people is to say, "Well, it's a difference in saying I'm marrying outside because I didn't know this before, and you actually took rhetoric to." Speak against that. That's but I look at the, where does the redeemability come there? But look like, at what he's doing now, though. But see, like he said, that was four or five years ago. Look at what he's doing now. I he said, he said I, I, I agree with you. I thank this brother. I just say, I, I say, I just told this brother, listen, thank you for whatever you do for black people. I'm speaking for black people as a whole when we keep having this conversation about why it's coming up and if he's redeemable or not. I'm telling y'all, as the majority of black people, and probably people in that, that chat downstairs, this is where their head is at. If okay. it's just hard well, the people in the I chat don't really know. represent the majority of the black community. I can promise you that. I don't understand how what? We're so this, keeps coming, this keeps coming up, so obviously this is a thing for majority. Oh, no, no, yeah, of course it keeps coming our up. Panels, it's our panels for audience. Been with this. It don't come up on it like that. Everyone in the black community is not really on that like that. Now, if you now if I was with a blonde hair, blue eyed white woman, oh hell yeah, everybody be on yep. that. <laughs> yep. Trust me, it ain't nothing I can say at that point. But you just said something that was striking to me when you said the people in the chat don't represent the majority yeah. of black people. No, and they, they don't. do. They do. No, They're they black do people. You know why I can tell you they do not because we wouldn't even number one. I would know that, okay, if the majority of black people feel that way and they're that uh, aggressive about it, then none of us would be dating outside our race. None of us will because it would never be accepted nowhere, male or female. Got a point. Well, that doesn't mean that they don't, they don't, they, that does oh, not. It's mean not the majority, that, though. They don't you, mean that they're admit, not. But do you represent, they represent, no, no, no. The, they represent, no, no, no. The, they represent the majority okay, of pro black so, people. They right, represent so, majority okay, of that. That's, and that's so a small what? subsection. So, you, no, that's, that's, that's the section that you're true. repping, but it's the section that you're repping. That's, that's the part you don't get. No, no, I've never came. No, if you go read my description of my news channel, it is a news channel. Black people do not have news channels that promote what black people want to talk about in the area of the news. I never started my channel saying I'm an activist or anything. People put that on me. I never said that. But once you got into that role, brother, this is what I'm saying to you. You you're gonna wear that. By default, you, you took that. that I'm sorry. 
Yeah, you good. You good. By default, you took that. And well, but that's, but that's something. Oh, but that's on, something. Hold on, but man, they, but off, it didn't. Man, hold on. You, you, when you're referring on. to me, I have to respond to it. So, but let me finish saying what I'm saying before you respond, brother. That's all I'm saying. Hold you on. Respond, when but you're let referring me to me in that in that area, and you say, "Well, he said, well, you pro black, you put yourself in that." I, you can say whatever you want to say about that. My thing is, when I look at the news. Black people don't have their side of the story. They don't have their side in politics. They don't have their side in anything with that. So we need to have platforms to speak about the issues in the black community within the news, politics, etc. We got to have that. That's the thought. Okay, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you on that point. The point that I just made to you is when you said uh, I'm pro-black, the people put that on me. And I'm telling you that because of the things that you talk about on your show, as it pertains to black yeah. people, by default, you then become a spokesman for the for the pro blacks. You then be by default, brother. How do you not understand that? And anyway, as a black man, I have no other choice but to be pro black, if truth be told, because it's about black first. Well, I'm a black man. It would be asinine for me to sit here and be and say anything other than I yes, I am pro black. I'm a black man. By default, I have to be pro black. Now I might I, I might in, in I might now, let, me correct. Finish, let me finish. No, and not in principle. That's what it is. That's 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 but see, all it's the a way difference around. It means it's a difference between being right. You it's guys a difference. Are pointing is pro black. It's a difference between being right and correct. And in the law, in the court of law, you must, in order to be successful in a court of law, you must be both right and correct. If you go in the court of law and you're simply right and not correct, you won't win that case. If you go in a court of law and you're uh, in a court of law and you're correct and not right, you're not going to win the case. That's where a lot of black people get 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 screwed at because they don't understand you have to be both right and correct. Now, I'm simply telling you that by being a black man, by default, I then become pro-black. I'm also simply telling you that by you having a platform and speaking about black agendas as it pertains to black people, you by that. default become pro-black. Period. And then now you're you can spin be it either way you want to spin it, but that's the truth of the matter. Okay, now can I respond to that? Sure. Okay. Yes. I mean, automatically, pro means for. Yes, I am for black people, but when I say the terminology and the way y'all apply it is something that's not attainable according to the rules that you guys have set for me, okay? Because you guys set a, a list of rules for me already. I am for black people, and I'd rather show that more than just talk about it on a panel, correct? So everything I'm going to do and promote about, for instance, I'm big right now, Afrocentric schools, black children need to be taught by black teachers, uh, etc. Just to get rid of the school to prison pipeline. That's just one thing I'm big about now. I, I want to see that happen. Um, it's a lot of things that I promote uh, on my show that's for black people, and I'm not going to change that no time soon. But what some people define as a quote unquote pro black, I can't I can't meet that definition based on what you guys say based on my spouse. So I'm not what your definition of a pro black would be, but I am for black people. Yo, can I can I add in there? Go ahead, bro. What's good, family? What's good, What's good bro? Peace, 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 Black bro. Power. Black Power. Yo, just so y'all know, Phil donated five hundred dollars publicly with his full name to the institute. So you know, what I mean, like that counts for everybody in the in the conscious community. You know, that's a lot more than a lot of people have in the in the conscious community with with big platforms. But um, I think I, what I was gonna say, listening in, and from what I see on the internet. I think that there's a blending going on and I think we just have to give ourselves time to really mesh the culture together because some of us come from parts of the country that wasn't privy to certain types of culture. You know, like we are, we may be in the East coast or in, or in Chicago in certain places. And because of that, you know, there's certain cultural things that they weren't, you know, uh, uh, um, open to like, you know, for example, just like eat, being a vegan, um, in, in New York, in Brooklyn, the Rastafarian movement had veganism being pushed very, you know, since for a long time. And um, the culture was there, you know, from that part. Um, of course, you have the Nation of Islam and their promotion of certain things. You know, in other parts, when I, when I travel around the country, I meet a lot of people and we would say that they're uncultured. 
where they don't have a knowledge of self where like look they'll, they'll smoke anything they'll drink anything they'll put any type of poison in their body they'll have sex with any type of woman they'll do anything and so when people are learning to become cultured they develop over time and then they start to see like oh this is where i was might have been not cultured at or might have not been cultivated to have a level of consciousness in this arena at and so like what i hear what, what phil just said and other people will say like yo you know because like if we think about david chappelle like for me david chappelle was like a very instrumental person in who i am in 1999 and I don't know if you're in a conscious community, David Chappelle, the whole most deaf movement. A lot of those people got, you know, wives that are not black, you know, and it, it, that was a, that was the, that was the energy back then. A lot of people were into the Asian movement. There's a lot of black people that was completely taken over by the Asian stuff. And we just got to understand we, we, we developed over time. And right now we're meshing it in. So the, the cultural norms that some people might have had in Chicago, are now mixing with New York and now people in North Carolina are hearing about it and we're all on the internet together now. And on, right on this panel, all the time we're now on this planet, you got 10 different states standing on here all the time. And so people are getting blends of different cultures. You know, there hasn't been too many opportunities for hardcore pro-blacks to build with people who are just getting introduced to being what it is to be pro-black or to be conscientious pro-black. You know, it, it, it's a blend of it. And so, you know, like Phil just said, by your definition, you know, I may not be pro-black and that's something to think about, but you don't want him to say, oh, I'm not pro-black. It's understanding like, like twin said, the actions will make you be who you are, you know, and then you just have to be honest with what you had in your past, you know, and that's just the reality, but trying to hide from your past, like, look, you might've been a crackhead. You know, a lot of times people talk about how many crackheads are conscious in the movement now and they make fun of them for that or people that came out of jail or people that were dating a white person, you know, the, 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 the actions over time will definitely dictate if a person is worthy of being considered to be um, redeemed, you know, right. but also at the same time, I was to ask. you know, but I will say also at the same time, we have to have a grain of salt blatantly to people. Like, look, you can't get this job if you don't have a college degree. That's it. We won't consider you pro-black and conscious for the movement in 2018 if you're out there making interracial babies. Like if it was 2008, 2004, you, 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 you got married in two, 1999, that was a different era. You know, it's was 2019. Look, bro, like, you know what I mean? We're not, we not rocking with you. Well, I mean, like, like I was saying before, you know, um, I'm not saying he should divorce his wife or anybody should even expect him to divorce his wife. I'm not mm -hmm. saying he can't help the black community. The one thing nobody wants to hear him doing, though, again, is speaking on black love. That's just, yeah, exactly. That's what triggers people. I think if he just kept it at, you know, he's just going to do little things uh, around the community or whatever, you know, like donate to you or whatever, things that help around or whatever to get. Nobody's going to have a problem with that. If he speaks about the news or whatever and gives his perspective or whatever and, and allows people to have a, um, to give a, a, a black view on things as far as like, um, things that's popping off around the world that's fine but yeah 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 but for him to get up on here and start you know talking about well you know we should we should mess around with black women only and this that or anything else and it's like you you like you know the hypocrisy of it alone is kind of like insulting you know it's like you you know like stop it like i don't want to hear this is the last thing i want to hear you talking about you can talk about the other stuff whatever you know if some people listen to you some people might not listen to you because of the situation but at least at that moment, you're speaking on something that you that you can speak on, opposed to something that you really gonna be looking very hypocritical and contradictory as soon as you open up your mouth, which is black love. You shouldn't be talking about that at all. So oh, hold on, let me ask you a question. Let me respond to that. Let me ask you a question. Carib, that was no shot to you or anybody who's donated. I say whatever you can donate. I just saying for the people in the audience of like. I don't consider Phil to be amongst the pro-black community, like how we put it up there. So when people, I put that up to say like, this is something that he did as an action to show he wants to help the community out. And that's more than I can say for people who, who act like they want to help the community out and they have a, a, a woman who's not, or a mate that's not black. You know, it was no offense to anybody in there. You know what I mean? Right. Well, let me ask you a question. What, what is the difference between love in a relationship and then black love? What is the difference? 
gotta, it, black love is with a black person. I don't, okay, I, I, but I, I, uh, outside of the color, what is the difference with, with just being in a relationship, a marriage? Well, what's the difference? Well, they, there is no difference to me, but you know, you, you sleep in oh, white, oh, you know, okay. non black. I can just I'm say, asking you sleep in I'm asking a question so you can help me. So, when I have a, a young brother, you know, behind the scenes emailing and saying, you know, I'm having this kind of issue in my relationship, he's with a, you know, a black person. So, I need to tell that young brother, wait, well, look, man, you can't email me because, you know, I don't have a black wife. So, I can't really help you, young brother. Even though I kind of been down that route already in relationships, but. That's should that's how I respond. I mean, if if, if person asks you a question, I mean, you can answer it to the best of your ability. Probably behind the scenes, I wouldn't publicly make I, a video responding to them. No, because again, you you are you are in a situation where you really shouldn't be talking about this stuff. Okay, I mean, well, I don't even know why you would want to bring that type. Why would you want to talk about uh, this when you know that's that's going to bring? Why do I want to talk about it? Because I've had a lot of experiences <laughs> in relationships. I've been married. I've been divorced. I've I've. Uh, Definitely, I pay child support. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of things in relationships between there's a lot of things that I feel like I can share because some people are telling me things have even been married and they want mm -hmm. time. Okay. So I can share about all those things why you should get married, why you shouldn't get married, divorce, whatever else. Mm -hmm. Experience experiences in, in the world, right? Yeah, the only right. difference with black people is the issues that we deal with in society will make it a little different than most. Okay. No, yeah, I can ask you a question. I can ask you a question. Actually, feel if I was your management team mm -hmm. and uh, you're moving into a more, you are in a public, you are a proper profile. You have over a million followers at this million, one million, two hundred thousand. There are, I agree, there are certain subjects that you shouldn't touch. And if I was on your advisor team, I would say that. And I do agree with them as far as, and this is not just you, this would be anyone. And it doesn't right. have to be this particular thing. Because you, when you start dealing with masses of people, you're dealing with the mass thought. And we all want to, we're all still us. Anybody on there has had any kind of success um, locally or, or in different fields, you know, you never change, you know, who you are. But when you're on a, a bigger platform, that's where the change comes. And the, they will tear you down. I mean, you, you're experiencing it in a little bit now. And um, I don't think anybody's being ungenuine or, or hypocritical. I mean, not hypocritical, critical or not coming from a place of love. I don't, I don't hear that at all. And yeah. like I said, that's kind of my lane professionally, you know, and I would. If I was on your management squad and your advisor team, I, you know, we'd have a list of, don't you answer these are some very preset questions, you know, for I, certain topics. I know. I'm not going. I know. I know. If I, I know. If I was, I know. If if I was hooked on drugs, I'm not going to listen to a crackhead telling me how to live a sober life who's currently on crack. Well, well, at, I'm just not. I'm just not going to listen to him. Uh, uh, like at the end of the day, I focus really on racism and white supremacy. I really don't focus on relationships. That's people in the chat room started that. I don't talk about uh, relationships all the time. And I do talk about it on my podcast, but it's more so in the general sense because general sense is what kind of I talk about here and there. But if it's not racism, and white supremacy, and what I'm kind of focused on and beelining on, you're not going to hear me do too many of those videos anyway. That's just regardless. And the times I have talked about it is because it came up in news stories. I didn't like purposely go <laughs> looking for it to say this is what I want my whole summit on or when I do an event. It's not going to be on no marriage retreat kind of event unless it's going to be in the general sense. Yeah. Um, but because my thing is all the arguing and everything we're talking about, nothing is getting done. We're not addressing the bigger issues in the black community because, OK, look, throw me away, whatever words you want to do. Cool. At the end of the day, I'm going to continue to do what I do. I, I promise you that I will double down, triple down on what I do. Okay. Well, I, do. I would prefer that he uh, promotes black love, even though he's not in a relationship with someone that's black because of his black children. I would prefer his black children, even though, you know, his wife is not black. I, I would like to see his children marry black. And I think he said he wanted his children. I want to see all black folks marry black. So any, like, there is so much promotion of the opposite. I don't think we can get enough promotion of what we need. So even though he's not a black woman, I would prefer him to promote uh, black men being with black women, if not, at least for his daughters. Well, but according to them, I can't even promote that because of 
you know, my spouse. I shouldn't promote this to no black man. I mean, really, if they want me to live my truth, should I start promoting black men to be with Latinas and Native American women? Like, no, that's, that's what I should start promoting. You know what? Can I, I, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. I don't think that's what well, that's no, that wasn't my what I was saying. Again, we're talking about the masses. I'm saying right. percept. I think we're I think we're really downplaying perception, brother. I respect, even though I don't agree with Swirling, but I respect what you, I just said. It, I told you I I thank you. Now I thank everybody for what they do for black people. But my thing is perception is perception, and like he said, bro, this is what you're gonna get when you. Sp I don't think you're gonna get no kickback if you keep it at black of uh, the other issues that we're dealing with. I don't think you're gonna see that. But I do think when you start tapping on. Uh, black relationships, you're gonna get that kickback, and it's just something you're not gonna get around that, bro. And as far as promoting it, it's a different thing in promoting it. Yes, tell your children. Yes, if you have a brother that hits you on the side, hits you personally, of course, as a black man, promote it. But what we're saying is, you're gonna get that kickback when you get on your channel, on your podcast, or whatever else that's public, as a public figure that you are, whether you like it or not, the hat that you wear, spouting black love you're gonna get sisters like we see all the time you're gonna get them black women in that chat that's like you're full of shit why is he talking on this blah 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 and it's gonna continue to throw off these so brother we ain't even talking about you brother i could be happens. talking about something else they don't even mention that and they come bring that up so so and what about that then i could be a CT on my channel i control it a lot of that though brother we defend that if you know this me, I look, we be in that when we see people go down, we be in there defending that. This ain't about uh, his relationship tonight. No, 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 no. That's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about we could be talking about something else like uh you know, shoot, something racism going on, and then somebody starts talking about that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We defend that on this um Nihilist channel. You I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you. I'm not listen. I'm not saying you. He's asking uh, what should say, he Hey, do. we ain't talking about that crap right now. I'm talking about the people that constantly try to come in you and bring it up. Like I know. I know for the you record. Keep but, you keep doing your work and you keep speaking on whatever the topic is. And again, that's what the mods and that's what we down there for. But stay. That, I think everybody what they think what the thing is is as long as you in that lane. People don't hold, I'm going to hold you down. But yeah, as a, I can't really come to your defense when somebody, if we're having a discussion about black relationships and you and you decide to get in there, you're fair game at that point, bro. But yeah, the people are just attacking you on bullshit. Yeah, bro. I mean, we, I think and we for the record, the for the record, this was being talked about when I first came in here. I didn't bring it up. Y'all was already talking about it. So let's get, I just want to put that out there. Can I go back to um Phil's question? I think I I, I think we I, personally I skipped over it. Black love is the appreciation of yourself. It's the understanding that that appreciation is needed because we live in a society in which the oppressors and those who seek to oppress us are doing things to make sure that we don't love ourselves. It's a conscious thought. Because in this society, we're taught to love everything white. So when you say black love, you're saying that you love everything that is against white because you're going against the system. When you look on TV, you don't see beautiful black women being promoted like that. So when you say I seek black love, you're looking for a strong black woman. When a black woman says that, that's she's saying that because when you look on Netflix, you don't see a bunch of strong black men. Mm -hmm. What you see is a bunch of sucker ass black men. So a black woman has to be conscientious to know what she's looking for. And so I say that to you, Phil, I would take that approach and in saying like, look, you didn't, you might not have been taught that because of what you said earlier, where you was raised and how you were taught. But that doesn't mean that you can't use your platform to let other people who have successful black relationships to come on in and discuss their views on, 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 on their, on black love. And yeah. that of itself, is black love yeah and the best relationship advice a swirler can give you are you you're probably not going to give because it'll be throwing your wife under the bus but the best swirl advice i can hear from somebody is them telling me the detriment of swirling the mistakes they made by swirling that's the best swirling advice i can dating advice i can hear from a swirler but you're not going to do that because you're, you're currently married to your wife and you're not going to throw her under the bus because that's what you'll be doing in the process so uh, yeah this, these unions to his children, though. What happened? He should be promoting his children to be with black people. 
Well, that's a whole different. I don't even know if, it, um, if his children are they biracial or are they black? What are they? I mean, I'm sure he was like, well, I heard his wife told me she wants him to do all the work that he can in the black community because at the end of the day, she's raising two black girls and whatever he does for black. Oh people. well, I, I I'm not a one dropper, so I don't consider his kids black. If he if he had kids with with his wife, I don't consider them black. I think that Phil is more than one drop black. I think that his contribution to his kids were more than one drop. Come on, psychopathic. He not. But well, we know what the one drop rule is. You know, I ain't. You know, you understand what I'm saying. Um, if you, if I don't subscribe to the whole biracials being black. That's just not the case. I, I believe I heard Phil say he got eighty something percent African DNA in his system, which he's clearly a black man. But his kids don't, ain't nowhere close to that. Right. So, like for me, when it comes to biracial children, um, I'm for me they biracial if they're raised by they by their white people. Um, if they're raised in culture with us, mm -hmm. then I think they they are us. But I think if they uh, if they that they're I mean and that's what I'm just saying. Like if they're raised in with us, if we culture them when they are a mixed race, I think if they are raised by their black family then they mm -hmm. are black because it comes to a point when they're biracial. Now I know genetically, you know, oh. what it is, but mm -hmm. the world is not viewing them as, as, as either or, but if they're with us and we culture them and we train them to be black and they have the black experience then for me, then- Nah, black people just be on this beat. <laughs> but I will say this, like some of the arguments that I'm seeing is people saying, well, you can't tell your kids to do something that you're not doing. To me, that's a baseless argument because, like, if you're an alcoholic, you're not supposed to teach your kids not to do it. If you smoke crack, you're not supposed to teach your kids not to do it. Like, it's, it's, like, well, I mean, how can I, how can I tell his kids to deny his, the other side of them? That's that's all. That's unfair to his kids. I mean, because his kids isn't full black. They they half black, half Mexican. So I, I, I'm so. How can I honestly tell his kid to deny the other half of him and say he can't mess with a Mexican girl? He's half Mexican. He's not just half black. So. I, I said promoting. Like you can't stop your kids. Your kids, you know what I'm saying? We can't. No, stop I'm saying even promotion. How how can I honestly, in good faith, promote that to a biracial person that they have to be faithful to one side of them and I, leave, completely I, I, leave the other side alone? But like what I'm saying, honey, is we can promote whatever we want to our children. They're gonna do what they want, but I think that we should promote what what we think is best for them, and they either accept it or they don't. But I think that it's better. I don't you think it's better to be with black people than it is for him to say, you know what, you can be with a Mexican or you can be with a white person. You can be with this person. Would it be better for him to promote them to be with black people? I, I don't agree. I, I don't I don't concern myself with what biracials do because I um biracials again is a, is a very confusing situation. You know, they grow up mentally lost, like as far as like what side of the fence they on. And you do say that um, you know, like raised in the hood, a lot of them do pick up black mentality. That's fine. Um, I don't buy into the whole transracial philosophy if that's the case rachel dolezal is black because she definitely identifies as black she's actually acts more pro-black than a lot of these fake pro-blacks i'll be seeing up on youtube to be honest with you but she's clearly not a black woman so i like so um i, I can't go off this what do you identify as you know I, so where did this come from did we just develop this or did, or did this come from slavery with the i mean where did it become wrong to try if they were raised by us and you know like because black people have been mixed and biracial since the plantation yes so when, do we, when do we start dissing them just because they were biracial when do we start saying for the record for the record yeah no for the record this isn't me dissing them you know this is a narrative that biracial this is a wait a reason why i say this is because this is a narrative biracials are pushing the, right. i mean um, um no, way before way before social media Tiger Woods was on his soapbox saying, I'm not black, I'm biracial. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it wasn't just him. This is a narrative that's being spun around a lot of places. You hear a lot of biracials running around here saying that now. I'm not black, I'm biracial. I'm not denouncing my other side and everything else. Like they 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 now in 2019 have a choice of not choosing to be black. Before they didn't have a choice. But that's why I'm saying the ones that we raised and we culture them and, and we make people. 
Because like, there are there are biracial in my family, but them them motherfuckers is black. Well, I, I think I think sometimes that can backfire though because I have a sister that's biracial and she always was confused and she, she let, let me tell you she was she ain't got no Mexican in her. My father's black and she, so she's been around the black culture. She was taught to marry black, all of that, but she ended up with a Mexican. And okay. I, I think sometimes exactly. that, that backfires with them saying they grow up around us. Sometimes that so don't I, always work. I, like, I'm not saying 100% foolproof. I think y'all are like... Yeah, my helper was confused. I can't, whole life. I can't speak in absolutes about anything. So I didn't no, think I, mean, I, yeah, I, 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 I didn't think I was having to state the obvious. No, you don't have to say that. No, I'm just saying that that does backfire because she, that helper was... Her whole life she was confused. And I remember... Like, I would always be like, you're black. Like, she would get around them Hispanics, man, and lose. I'm like, you're not even Hispanic. You're, you're Filipino. But I'm like, just talking about, like, what is, really confused. What, is what is what is progressive here? And what is realistic? You got pro-black niggas that will follow Colin Kaepernick. You have pro-black niggas that will follow Jesse Williams. That will follow all of these white women's children. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But then when we're having conversations like these, like, would y'all rather an Obama, which I'm not, Obama's probably a bad example, but would it be better for him to marry a white woman or a black woman? Like, when we get through doing that, like, how far does that roll back? What are y'all saying, throw away the biracials in the community? Well, I, I'm not saying that at all. I, I was just yeah, because you'd have to throw away uh, most of black history if we're going to start throwing biracials and light skin and mixed folks. Boy. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a red. Uh, fact, you have to throw away all of them, all those that white DNA. Like who? Throw, who we throwing away? Who we throwing away? If, if you're not, because basically y'all pushing an African purity argument, and the only way you can have an African purity argument, you have to literally marry an African who has no uh, traces to the uh, slave trade. No, nah, because that's not me. Not here. That here. No, no, that's not what I subscribe to. Though. Here, ha have a um, some sort of white DNA due to slavery. Period. No, we know, no, we no. I I subscribe to you have you you have to have seventy percent African DNA is what I subscribe to. Um, that I don't I don't because we all we all have some. You none of us are one hundred percent African, right? But if you us. look so, at me and I look black, but I'm sixty percent like Phil's wife. You you're not black. Then you're not black. Yeah, but not but if you book. looked at me and you didn't see that DNA list, you wouldn't know that. I'm I'm just letting you know if you if you don't have 70 percent you just not black and yet that yes that includes Obama that includes Bob Marley no, that that includes that, inc I'm that no but you can be 60 percent and and have black your family is black two or three generations back I'm proof of that well, I but I'm brown skin yeah. now I got cousins that look white but we exactly the same there's no difference in us but the skin tone. But we didn't get to choose what color we come out. But we don't have a pure white relative for about two, two, three generations. Mm -hmm. but so, you see what I'm so, saying? You, you see how that was it, was it, So was it so was it um like a consistent um like was it uh, other biracials getting together? Like are you Creole? Yeah, I am. Oh, okay, well that explains it. Creole's got a Creole's practice um colorism. And you know y'all we weren't practicing colorism, though. That's what I'm saying. Well, it's it's tradition. I'm telling you, tradition. Creoles practice colorism. Colorism is very serious. My son Creole is culture. light skin. Me and his daddy and not they, light skin. What what you had was a what you had was a bunch of biracials who stuck together, stuck together, and they were just making a bunch of biracial kids. That's how you probably end up with the sixty percent, because you it was just a bunch of biracials just kept getting together, just making more biracial kids. So are we to say genetics or culture? Because see, that's one, one right. And then the so said this is only skin deep, right? I was gonna say that. Who wants to marry trashy people? And they could be a hundred percent black. You gonna marry some trash ass low class bastards? What about uh? What about the? Let, let me ask you a question. What about uh, uh Tamara from uh Sister Sister? The, uh, I forgot what talk show she's on now. Is she black? I would say she's black. Her mother's black. That's who raised her. Okay, well, she 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 has fifty one percent European DNA. She has yeah, more European DNA in her than black DNA, and you just called her a black woman. I, I, I want you. That, I want you to think about that. I, I think that it gets, gets kind of unfair to do that scale 
like honestly, it, it gets it gets real skewed, bro. Because it's like you have children that were the products of white men, like you said, Bob Marley. Bob Marley's pops, I think, raped his moms and left her. You had that was typical during you know the 1850s. Not even to go far back into slavery, but the 1850s, the 1870s, that was still common. And so you had a lot of black women who were raising their children who were fathered by white men that left them. And you know, what I mean, it's really hard to play that scale game. You know, what I mean, we just have to we have to have a part of it that we that is based off of your actions and your rhetoric and your political belief system, you know, and until we can start saying like, no, we're filtering that white shit out. Like, look, B, you know, but yeah, yeah. I mean, isn't that the purpose of us talking about black love? I mean, what's the purpose of being anti-swirl if we just go and count all biracials as being black? Like, I never understood no, that I, logic. No, I, 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 but I'm saying that since you can just say it off of skin tone, you have to go slightly, you have to go past the skin tone because it can get very confusing. There. And even just pick up other things though, besides skin tone, you got phenotypes. Like we, we need to get outside, we need to start looking at genetics. You you know that boss now. You're a genetic man. Like you got another skin tone. Let me let can I say something, uh please? Uh, this uh issue. Uh, I just wanted to say that I think Nyla, didn't we have a a stream about the attitude? A person, whatever skin tone they are, we have black people that are mixed with various different things. We're not all pure here because of the slave trade. Right. I'm more concerned about a person's attitude. Do they have a pro-black or black first attitude and behavior through their actions? Uh, Phil said it before. If we use this criteria, we might as well throw out the history books because there's been a lot of black people in history that were mixed like this or lighter skin who did great things for our community and stood up for us. And a lot of times you have some lighter skinned black people who have to be super black because they're always being looked at as not black enough. All, this plays into the hand of our enemy when we divide and conquer ourselves by all this colorism shit. And this is the reason why we black, as black people at times we can't get anywhere because we're so caught up in ideologies as whole as back. I judge a person by their actions. If a black person is lighter skinned but they are for black people and they're doing things that benefit us and they identify themselves as black and they have black some black heritage, even though they might be mixed because we're all freaking mixed. If you go back, you will find out you're mixed in some way or another. We all got somebody in our family of a different mixture, what have you. So can't, we can't sit up here and talk like we're so super pure. <laughs> I mean, shit. Ain't nobody it ain't about being super pure. Seventy percent is not p super pure. I'm oh, not. Well, brother, I'm not. Well, this isn't about colorism well, either, because light skin and biracial is two different things. That's well, another thing people uh, mistake. Uh, okay, let's let's thing. Thing. okay. What about having this period me, argument? Me, with, no, I'm not. Period. I'm not finished. Okay, what, go ahead. Man. This. What about people? Let's say you have someone who may have a a white mother, mm -hmm. and they have a black father. Mm -hmm. but they identify themselves as black and all their life they've been raised by the black community. They have a black attitude in a black worldview and they're in the community doing things to help black people. And they don't, they're not uh, acting like a buffer. Now I know there's mm -hmm. some people that do buffer psycho, but there are black people who do have this disposition, who do happen to have a white mother or white father. And I, and I, and I gotta say this brother, none of us, are in charge of who brings us in a goddamn world, but we are in charge. I don't blame about life that we want to live and how we want to carry out our actions in life. I don't we blame biracials for being biracial. Let me get that clear. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like you said; it's not their fault how they born. Uh, my my thing is this though. I, I I saw I saw a documentary one time with a with a little boy was raised in the woods by a bunch of wolves. And he really was a feral boy. He really thought he was a wolf. He was hopping around on four legs, barking, licking out the bowl like a like a wolf, and everything else. And he was I, I, he was like thirteen years, I, I, yeah, like thirteen years old. Straight thought he was a wolf. Thought he was a wolf because he was raised. Wait, because he was raised by a pack of wolves. I guess, now, did that mean he's a wolf because he identified as a wolf? Does that mean he's a wolf? Well, I don't think that's. A, I don't think that's a. That's a. That's. I see your example, but I'm talking about someone who actually does have a black parent, whether it be the mother or father, and they may see themselves as black, 
because they identify as black because they had a black father or black mother and they've been raised in the black community that has embraced them. I mean, that's been the history of our people. We've always embraced people that have been different than us in our community that may have black blood in them and we identify and we have embraced them, especially when they are on code with our culture and on code as a black person because they might have, you know, they may be mixed. These things have happened. I mean, think about this. How many black people run around talking about, ooh, my great-great-grandmother was a Cherokee. We're so proud of yeah. being yeah. Indian. We're yeah. so proud of saying we want to be every goddamn race. We're very proud of when we're mixed with something. We look at our, 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 our heritage, right? So if we're going to talk all this we're Native American stuff, mm. and, 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 and let's be honest, Mexicans come out of Native American uh, heritage. If you go right. Look right. at the DNA. They all mongoloids. So, right. so, so when we look at, for example, Phil's wife, okay, she may have more connection to Native American culture than some of us Negroes because not every black person has Native American blood. Black people and Native people only mix together in certain parts of the country. I know this sure. because my ancestors were freemen. I can speak to that. My sure. mother is a part of an, a black Native American association. She's got mm -hmm. her her damn uh, her card her 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 uh, she's you registered. Know, she's she's been, registered. Been registered, right? right. There's certain things that I can benefit from, but brother, I I, I get it though. Uh, cycle. There are some of the, some folks out here who are acting as buffers, and they are hurting us. My voice is all messed up tonight, brother. But that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I feel you. My, like again, my whole position about this whole thing is this: we have allowed white people to identify with blacknesses since slavery. The only reason, but only reason we call them biracial is black to this day is because white people told us they was black. At what point do we start identifying ourselves? And it, yes, it's going to have to eventually be a cutoff point if we do um, start identifying ourselves. Somebody, we're going to have to draw the line somewhere because if, we, if, we, if the line starts being subjective and we start, well, making exceptions for this person, making exceptions for that person, then what are we really doing? Then at, at that point, again, we are let we allowing other people to identify as well because well, i hear people make arguments well uh, they, they treat biracials bad too and everything else uh, but biracials get pulled over by the cops too well so do mexicans so do puerto ricans i know they get pulled over by the cops too but they're not black so um you know like I, when i say puerto ricans i'm not talking about black puerto ricans let's get that clear you know what i'm saying i'm saying so like at, at what point do we just draw the line and say okay well this is what it is you know, we we somebody we got to draw that hard line at some point, but people don't ever want to take that real hard stance. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious to know. You know, it's like right. though, I think what you're, to, you're what you're talking about is nation, bro. Right. Being black is white. Like black is some white shit. You know, what I mean, being in all honesty, what you just said that is a description that white people gave us. If going down to what we're talking about is honestly what Phil said, where we're saying we want to reacquaint our blood with being. The original blood so we should go find people from africa to mate with and clean up our blood to remove the white from it i'm cool with that you know but but outside of that and that's nationhood you know focusing on reacquainting ourselves with our original nations but in america black is a white term and so by white people's standards anybody who has 116 black blood is black to them so to them you're black we're just playing with that word and you know in all honesty and we're trying to create a culture out of it which we're doing now and we're saying like i know we're going to lock in and say this is what it is but we also have to understand that's part of being a nation and we're making a nationhood per, you know view i hear you i hear you you know uh, again i just like i know like a lot of people view me as the bad guy on this because a lot of people subscribe to this you know biracial thing um about you're the bad guy Stop. no no i'm not no i'm not even talking about this panel i'm just saying in general like i i, I talk about this topic a lot and i get a lot of heat for it um yeah. because a, a lot of people have biracials in their family uh they a lot of people are interracial relationships and have biracial kids themselves so you know this topic kind of hits home with a lot of people but again i i hold my own family to the standard i got biracials in my family as well but i just don't consider them black 